Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. Um, today we're going to be talking about the role of a girlfriend and how not to give him the benefits of a husband because it is a difference. Now, let me start by saying, one, I had to log in to one of my other Facebooks because my primary Facebook that I have been using has been disabled. Um, it seems like a lot of girlfriends have taken offense to what I have been teaching or sharing and they have went on a campaign to report my page. Whenever someone is saying something and it opposes what you believe, you can always unfollow. If you want to remain a forever girlfriend, I simply explain that this is only for people who desire marriage. And the thing is, women have no control over marriage, believe it or not, because if a man does not want to marry you, he won't. So you don't have control over marriage. You have control over who you fuck. But you don't have no control over the ring. And that's just the truth. I asked a question this morning. And the question was, what is the ultimate gift that you could give a man? The ultimate gift that you could give a man is his legacy. Which is tied to his children. That is the ultimate gift that you could give him. And a lot of women are offended because I'm teaching principles. That's, that's what this boils down to. A lot of you are offended because I'm teaching basic principles. See, what I have come to realize is a lot of people have been, a lot of people have grown up, but they haven't been raised. See, when you are raised, Certain principles and things are instilled in you early on. Early, early, early on. And it ain't no slight to your mama or your grandmother because sometimes they didn't know. But when you have somebody that has come along and they're trying to teach you, the worst thing you could do is reject the truth because you looking at your outcome right now and you don't like your outcome. I look at women every day online who complain about their outcome. They complain about the men that they've selected. It's a constant complaint. And this morning I was in prayer and I say, Lord, I don't know. <laughs> I say, Lord, I, I, I just don't know. Like at this point, I really don't know. It's like you didn't just throw me out there in that water. And all I'm getting is attack, 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 attack. But what I understand is, and I'm going to get to my topic. What I, what I had to, to understand that he revealed to me this morning is when you brought this message to the church, those women that were faith-based, they received it a lot differently than a lot of the women that you're trying to bring this message to right now. See, when you bringing it to the women at the church, a lot of them were already Proverbs 31 women. So all they needed was just to let icing on the cake. And they off and they good to go. But Sharonda out have reversed it on you. Because see, you've been talking about sex for a long time. You've been talking about sucking dick and, and, and sucking knees and, and doing all this stuff for a long time. But now... This is where the work come in because now you're having to take a message to the world that is faith-based and I expect the world to push back and it's very discouraging. Lord knows it is very discouraging, but every time I say, you know what, this is it, he reminds me that there is work to be done. So let's get started. The young lady asked me last night. I'm just trying to pull it up. But the young lady asked me last night, Miss Sharonda, how is it 
that you're trying to be a girlfriend and show him that you are wife material. How do you show him that you're wife material without giving him the benefits of a husband? It seems like in order for him to see that you are wife material, you have to act like a wife to him. And I said, no, ma'am. Because a man that picks a wife or chooses a wife, he's choosing her because he's looking for certain things. He's looking for certain things. When I did my studying and my prayer, it was revealed to me to explain to you what a Proverbs 31 woman is. First of all, let me say this here. A Proverbs 31 woman has nothing to be with. It has nothing to do with her starting off being a wife. Proverbs 31 has nothing to do with you being a wife. Proverbs 31 has everything to do with you being a woman. Okay? So when a, when a man is selecting a woman to be his wife, he's looking for certain things in a woman. And when he finds a woman, right, he will decide if I want you to be my wife. So it's certain characteristics that a woman has. So today I'm going to teach you about what a woman brings to the table that will make him select you to be his wife without you having to give him the benefits of him being your husband. In other words, you don't get to reap all of this good stuff until you did your paperwork. See, when you go buy a house, you don't get to move into that house that you bought until you did your paperwork and closed on it. See, you don't get full access to everything that I have to bring to the table mm -hmm. until you have done your paperwork. And these are the things that are not being taught to young women today. Because your mama didn't do it. And because your grandmother didn't do it. And because your great grandmother didn't do it. It does not mean that it was done correctly. They just did what they knew. Let's talk about it. When you are a woman. And I'm just going to remove the whole Proverbs part from it. Okay. Even though this comes from the Proverbs teaching. When you are a woman, you have virtue. What is virtue, Sharonda? Virtue is behavior showing that you have morals of high standards. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everybody. I'm so sorry, but my other page was reported. So I had to log on to my old Facebook account. So if you want to share this, please share it so other women in the group can see it. Just hit that share button so other people can see it. What does it mean to have high standards, morals of high standards? What does that mean? This is very simple. It simply means that you understand the difference between right and wrong. And it simply means that you possess some form of self-control. Why is this important? When my husband went to prison for two and a half years, it was certain things that he didn't have to worry about concerning me. He didn't have to worry about me being out there in the streets dealing with other men because he knew my values. He knew my morals. He knew that I understand uh, right and wrong. He knew that I was a woman that had self-control because if I didn't have self-control, then I could be in and everywhere doing any and everything. But I was able to sustain myself during that time period because I understood what was important. Faithfulness. We are called to speak the truth, which is what Sharonda Parker does. We are called to earn the trust of others. If you didn't trust me, you would not be in my inbox asking for advice. If you did not trust me, you would not be booking sessions for your marriage and your relationship. If you did not trust me, you would not be registering for wife school. If you did not trust me, 
You would not be coming here to this store shopping here, but you choose to come here because you trust what I have to say. Not only do we enrich our own lives, but we enrich the people around us as well. That comes with faithfulness. Goodness. We are, to, we, we, we are put here to be good to people. When they come in contact with us, we should be kind to them. We should be a representation of a woman of faith. Keep in mind, I keep letting y'all know that I am a faith-based teacher, that I am a woman of God first before I'm anything. So if you are not a woman of God, please log off because I just got into it with a motherfucking troll this morning who let me know on my page that y'all was agreeing with her. If you go back, you'll see so many of y'all was liking what she had to say. And then when it all boiled down, she got to talking about how she ain't no believer. And you know what? It made so much sense to me because I understand why you battling with me so hard because we don't share the same belief. See, you have a reprobate mind. And when you have a reprobate mind, it simply means that you don't listen to your conscience that tells you right or wrong, which goes back to the first thing he said a woman was, a woman of virtue. So, you mean to tell me you're not a believer? That means that you're just not a woman of virtue. Me and you ain't got nothing to talk about. So, what I did was, I let her know, your time here has expired. In this group, because you don't belong here. You belong at another platform, not this one. But a lot of y'all was liking everything she had to say because you ain't got you y'all can live together and you ain't got to be holding out and you ain't got to be doing this and you and baby, you know what I said? I say, Lord, now you you really doing it, Lord? You really doing it because I'm trying hard to do your work. But this is, this, and, and, and it ain't easy. That's all I'm going to say. It ain't easy battling with ignorance. It ain't easy battling with people who on their page every day talking about how everything going wrong. And then a person has come along telling you, these are the things that you can do to fix it. And then they say, I ain't doing all that. I'm a girlfriend. Y'all wives think y'all all that. Y'all wives seem to want to put yourselves on a pedestal. No, ma'am. Wives are not putting themselves on the pedestal. Our husbands put us on the pedestal when he did the motherfucking paperwork. Come on now. I ain't never put myself on no pedestal. My husband put me on a pedestal when he chose me. It says that a woman is a hard worker. We're supposed to be hard workers, never lazy. We always trying to improve ourselves. We always trying to do better for ourselves because what we understand is when we better, everything around us is better. See, if God goodness is raining on me, if God goodness is raining on me and my children are attached to me, and my husband is attached to me. How they ain't gonna? Get, how they not gonna get wet? If God is raining on me, everything around me getting wet. God rains on me. You follow me. When you adhere to these teachings, you get wet. That means that His goodness that is on me is a part of you too. Provider. Business savvy. It's our job to pay attention to our world around us and take advantage of opportunities. A lot of people, and I, and you know, I don't get off into the stay at home mom and work or whatever because at the end of the day, you do what what works for your family. Okay, I'm not a stay at home mom, but I make sure that my family is a priority. They come first before this PPG stuff. They come first. 
So even if you are a stay-at-home mom, these are the things that you can do to create a passive income. That means that just because you're at home every day don't mean that you ain't got the opportunity to bring in resources. If you know how to bake a cake, do you know how much money you can make baking cakes? If you got a, a recipe for some badass pecan candy, do you know how many people buy pecan candy? In other words, it's things that you can do to bring in income that does not require you to leave your home. Some of y'all are really good with the cricket and the crafting and creating and making things. Some of y'all are really smart, which means that you could be a tutor. So what I'm saying is, there are things that you can do that don't require you to, to, to leave your home in order to bring in an income. Some of y'all can do taxes. Y'all are really good, really good at math. You could be accountants. You could be a bookkeeper for people. You can handle their payroll. And you're doing all of this stuff from home. Early riser. A woman, a good woman, she gets up early. It ain't no slight to the people that like to lay in the bed until 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. But I just want you to understand that your day going to flow different. Because the rest of the world has already started moving. These things were taught to me by my grandmother as a young girl. When you get up in the morning, you get your whole self together. Because you don't know what you're going to encounter once your feet touch the floor. And that is the truth. Because when you get up in the morning, you don't know how your day going to start. You don't know how quick you're going to have to move. You don't know what you're going to be into. So when you get up in the morning, you get up and you get your whole self together. Now, I'm going to tell you about my morning. When I get up in the morning, the first thing I do is open my eyes up and say, Lord, thank you. And at that moment, I get up out of my bed and most times Spencer is still sleeping. And I get up and I start walking my flows and I start praying over my children. I pray over my husband. At this point, I'm in meditation. I'm fixing my coffee. I'm in prayer and meditation for about 30 minutes to an hour every morning. Thanking God for everything that he's doing for me. See, prayer is when I'm talking to God. Meditation is when I'm thinking on his goodness. Thinking. I'm thinking on his goodness. I'm thinking that when I turn on that faucet, the water come out. I'm thanking him that when I flip on that light switch, the lights come on. I'm thanking him for everything that he put in my hands. I'm thanking him for giving me a womb to be able to bear children. To give my husband a legacy. Because I know that some people just can't. And it don't make them no less than a woman. But I thank, them that, I thank him that he was able to do that for me. Strength. He gives us, us our physical strength. He gives us our mental strength. He gives us our spiritual strength. Mental strength is I'm able to get up and walk around and use all my body, my limbs, and everything that he gives me, I'm able to utilize it. Mental strength. He wakes me up every morning and I'm in sound mind. I didn't wake up crazy this morning. I didn't wake up depressed with anxiety this morning. Spiritual strength. That's when I go to him and I talk to him and I ask him for guidance and direction. Endurance. Again, we are called to be hard workers, which means that when he puts something in our hands, we see to it becoming, we, we see to it being complete. Meaning that when we got dealings, we make sure that it's being handled. That means that when the, when the shit get funky, we're going to stay up late until we get the job done. That's endurance. Well-rounded. We are called to learn many skills. By learning many skills, that means that we grow as women. We grow. So when people got something to be able to teach you, even down to your children. We learn. We did an activity for family day where the children taught me how to fold up the paper and create animals. I had never done that before. But the children taught me how to do it. I'm always 
an open book. I have literally right now, I'm reading four books at one time. I'm reading four books. I got four books that I'm reading because even I have to prepare myself for wife school. Meaning that I want to make sure I'm touching on so many different principles. I want to make sure that I'm not missing nothing when it comes down to this task that God has put in my hands. That means that even I have to study to show myself approved. Charitable. We help people, especially the poor, without looking down on them. Now, let me tell you something, because I think last night some of y'all took shit the wrong way. When my husband said, when you carry yourself a certain way, men perceive you a certain way. Meaning that when you have on your bonnet and you got your purse thrown across you and you got on your body suit on top of your leggings, certain men view you a certain type of way. And you can't get mad when they look at you with your bonnet on, walk through the store with your slides on with fur all over them. And the man say, oh, I bet you she got some cheering at home, which equates to food stamps. He not looking down on you. He's saying that this is the way you presented yourself to the world. And you got a certain type of man that's looking for a certain type of woman. And let me tell you something. You got some men that so, they, they, they select women with children. Because they deviants and they pedophiles. See, when you got a lot of children, it's nothing wrong with you having a man in your life, but you got to make sure he in your life for the right reason. And he there for you and not your children. Not trying to get easy access to them. Because see, when you're dealing with pedophiles, they have a hunger and they have to feed it. So, just be mindful about certain things and be mindful about the way you carry yourself because you want to attract certain types of people in your life, especially when you have children. Trust. We have to trust God and his plan. Again, I'm a faith-based teacher. If this ain't your, if this ain't what you into, get on the body here. Even during hard times, we trust him. Marriage life, marriage. See, the reason why this is important before you become a wife is because if you can't trust God and his plan during hard times right now, you ain't a wife. When you become a wife, what the hell you think you're going to do? You're going to run for the hills. If you can't trust him as a single woman and trust his plan for your life as a single woman, you ain't ready to do it in no marriage. See, all these things, these are the things that's preparing you to be a wife. And this ain't got nothing to do with you cooking for him. This ain't got nothing to do with you washing for him. This ain't got nothing to do with you sucking or fucking him. This got everything to do with you being a woman. Dress well. Treat ourselves like our worth. Present the best version of yourself to the world. I'm going to repeat that. Present the best version of yourself to the world. This you as a girlfriend. This, you, ain't even, you ain't even a wife yet. But in order for you to get the husband, you got to present the best version of yourself to the world. Y'all argue with me about that and say, why I can't just be myself? Why I can't just walk around looking how I want to look because that's how I feel today. Well, baby, if you feel like that today, you stay at your house. Don't come out into this world and to the public. If today ain't a good day, you stay at your house until you can get it together. And when you get it together, then you can present yourself to the world. We have to be mindful of our appearance at all times. Because guess what? If you ain't mindful of your appearance as a girlfriend... You showing the fuck I ain't going to care as a wife. And when you become a wife, sometimes your husband got to bring you around people. He got to bring you to his corporate barbecues and picnics. Spencer used to work for a company called Keltec years ago. Keltec would give these, and then one year he worked he, for a while, he worked at Lions across the river. These companies would give these big picnics and stuff where you bring your wife and your family to. You think I want to show up on Spencer, to Spencer's job looking toe up? 
You think I want to represent him like that? Or do you, do, do you think I want to show up to Spencer's job looking like I got some sense? See, when Spencer worked at Johnson Controls, Spencer used to give me strawberry orders. Do you think that these men want to order strawberries from me for their wives if they see me and I look trifling? Who want to eat from me? Who want to eat from me? Who want to trust me with their strawberries if when they see me, I look toe up and trifling and bonnets on and slides and all of this shit when I leave my house? I don't want to eat from you. But y'all get offended when people tell you the truth. Let's get to husbands. See, a woman is going to marry a man who is going to, who she knows is going to be a good husband and a good leader. Because see, when I'm single and I'm crossing over into this married life, that's taking some of the pressure off of me. See, I'm supposed to cross over. My life's supposed to get better, not worse. I'm supposed to cross over and you were leaving me of some of this stress because I've been a single woman doing this on my own this whole time. And I can fall back and let you leave. Somebody said, there's no difference between a girlfriend and a wife. You could be the girlfriend and have his children. And your children become an adult and you never marry him. When something happened to him, they ain't looking for you. They looking for his children because his children is next to Ken, not you. It's a difference. It's a big difference. And for those of y'all who feel like it's okay to be a forever girlfriend, listen to this. You his forever girlfriend for eight years. You marry him. And within two years, you get a divorce. That means that you've given this man 10 years of your life, but you only got two years of benefits. See, if you had married his ass and you had to went through all of that with him for them 10 years, when his ass retired, you getting it. But with them two years and them eight years that you invested as his forever girlfriend, you don't qualify. See, when I'm looking at shit, I look at shit from a, a, a monetary perspective. Because see, a lot of y'all... Oh, shit, all about money. No, I'm all about inheritance. I'm all about benefits. Because if I'm going to do the role as your wife, I'm going to reap the benefits of your wife. I'm not putting in eight years as a girlfriend and two years as a, of a wife. And guess what? It don't work out between me and you. And I put in, gave you 10 motherfucking years of my life. And I don't reap the benefits of 10 years. See, I got my 10 years in because I made you shit or get up off the pot in the beginning. So therefore, when it don't work out between me and you, I still got access to my benefits. It don't even matter. I still got access to my benefits. What the hell I look like giving you 10 of the best years of my life as a young woman? And I don't... What? What? So for those of you all who keep on wanting to downplay the role of a wife, I, I don't. Wives have an obligation. And it is very important to have your paperwork in order. I told y'all at the beginning of this video, you see a beautiful house, you like it. You don't move in it until you close on it and do the paperwork. And the same thing applies to women. You don't get full access until you've done the paperwork. I understand that everybody don't want marriage. And if you don't want marriage, you should not be here. Because this video is for girlfriends who want to understand the difference of the role of a girlfriend and the role of a wife. Who want to understand not to give him certain benefits of a husband when he's just a boyfriend. You want to know the difference? I'm telling you. I say live separate. Oh no, Miss Sharonda, we gotta live together because we gotta see how we going we gotta see how we gonna get along living together. Baby, live separate. He don't need full access to you as a girlfriend. If he wants full access, he needs to put a ring on your finger. And once you are engaged, 
You all move together until it's time for you all to get married. I'm old school. I'm teaching you the same things I teach my daughters. And it's done out of love. See, because what happens is when you live together and you and, and the men don't like change. They don't like change. When you live together and you giving him all of these benefits and access, what is, what, what is his motivation to get married when he already got everything? What is his motivation to be responsible for you when he already got everything? You didn't gave him a household. You didn't gave him the benefits of a girl. You didn't even gave him a baby. And he still ain't married you. Because you're giving him too much too soon. The ultimate gift that you could give a man is his legacy, his children. That's the ultimate gift. If you've given him that already, what's that for him to work for? I, I, I'm throwing my hands up. Wise. A, a, a woman is wise. We think before we speak. Because we understand that life and death lies in the power of our tongue. So we choose our words wisely. Men notice that about women before they even marry them. Men notice the, the type of women that build them up and encourage them. That's why when they meet women who are so positive and optimistic, he willing to do any and everything for you so fast and so soon. And he ready to make a selection about you being his wife because you different. Because everybody else that he has met has been on some rah, 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 rah attitude bullshit. But you came along and you different. You carry yourself with class and grace. And he know it's different. And he know that he got to go ahead and put a fucking ring on it before somebody else do. He know it. We active. See, I feel like this here, you ain't got to live together. The reason you ain't got to live together, see, when he come into your space, your personal space, when you invite him over and say, sweetheart, because we're dating, how about, you know, one or two days out the week, I'll, I'll cook dinner and you can come over to my place and eat. Did I say you can't fuck him? I didn't say that. I just say he don't get full access. He coming over to your, your place because you dating him and he see how you got your place decked out. Meaning he realized that he got a woman that like nice shit. And he realized that if this going to be my woman, this is the standard that she has set for herself. So if she set this standard for herself, then I know that I got to be able to do this or better. And he realized that when he was dating you. When you was over there laying them fucking steaks out. Fixing them loaded baked potatoes. And you got a little asparagus on there. And you done went and got a little small chantilly cake that you can eat with him. And later on, you can eat that, eat that shit up with his dick. And then y'all part ways and be like, sweetheart, I'll see you later. Enjoy your day. I'll catch up with you. You know what that just did to his fucking mind? Because he came over to your place and he had such a good time with you. And you talking about some, Miss Sharonda, I feel like he got to live with you to see what your potential. No, he gonna want to put a ring on it because he gonna want that shit every day. Not just the dates that you delegate. Not just the little days out the week that you delegate for him to come over and spend time with you. He gonna constantly ring your phone. He gonna constantly want to know what you got going on. Constantly. I'm, I'm, I'm still doing this video because my Facebook has been flagged in. In the midst of me doing the video. But, God fearing. We are told to live in a way that honors God. Meaning that we put him first in everything that we do. Let's talk about the reward. Because one, one woman, she couldn't understand how... You doing all of this and it just seemed like certain things ain't fair. You doing way more than the husband doing. 
And my position is, who is keeping tabs? Who keeping tabs? Because love shows up when it sees the need. Reward. We will be honored for our hard work. God is the rewarder. Ah, Miss Sharon, I want my husband to reward me. Mm -mm. Because see, when you're a woman like this, God is the rewarder. And let me tell you something. He can reward you way better than your husband can ever reward you. And it ain't always materialistic things. He can reward you with opportunities. He can, re he can re reward you with your health. He can reward you with giving you your time. It's so many things that he could do to reward you. So I'm concluding with Hebrews 11 and 6. We all are people with faith, right? We all have faith. So being that we have faith, when we do well, God is our reward, right? You all be blessed. Please like and share, subscribe. You see the cash app if you enjoyed it. Send a tip. Be blessed.